Welcome back to Invest Global. Today we'll be discussing Avalanche versus Phantom, two blockchain projects doing incredible things in the crypto market. Now, keeping the big picture in mind throughout this video, there's really no one size fits all approach. Personally, I like to have exposure to a lot of different projects all running the same race to really provide the best smart contract platform out there. In my opinion, the future of this space is really interoperability where it doesn't really matter whether you like Avalanche or Phantom more, they're both out there, they're both options you can use to best suit your own needs when it comes to the decentralized finance marketplace. So the basic structure of this video, I'll have my friend Roland over at Microwhale, whose channel will be linked down below in the description. I highly recommend you go check him out. He actually did a two part series on this if you want a more deep dive um, you can check out his channel, but he'll basically be breaking down the liquidity incentives when you contrast it AVAX versus FTM. So beyond that, we'll be basically looking at some objective data near the end of the video, going through things like total value locked in, network fees, just to gain a bit of a better bird's eye view perspective. Enjoy. You compare these uh, two programs, these liquidity incentive programs. Um, so Avalanche incentivizes money, right? They are wanting capital deployed and they're paying this capital to be deployed on Avalanche. And Phantom, they're uh, incentivizing development. So if you develop a project on Phantom and you have a TVL um, over, uh, like an average TVL over a two month period, which is $5 million or higher, then you are going to get uh, Phantom as liquidity incentives to work on the project and you can deploy those Phantom tokens in whatever way you see fit. And so Phantom has basically the approach they, say, they are saying, hey, developers come to us and we will pay you for, for doing that. And I, I think it's very interesting um, and very, 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 very interesting how this plays out. And I could imagine that a lot of developers are in, like getting interested in Phantom because of that. And I, I hear that they have a good architecture, but I, I don't know any, like a lot, of it, a lot about the tech. Um, but I think actually that Avalanche is better than Phantom in that regard. Because even if you have developers coming onto Phantom and doing all that stuff, because they are getting these uh, Phantom liquidity incentives, still, what's the incentive for people to deploy on those uh, on those yield farms, right? So it's basically the other way around. Then you can say, all right, so if they have TVL, then they're getting the Phantom token, and then they can, they can incentivize their users to stake and to receive the Phantom tokens, but it's up to the developers. Whereas on Avalanche, Avalanche says straight, up, straight forward, all right, we are going to incentivize capital. So we're going to give it to you if you bridge money to Avalanche. This will make it easier. If, if I would be a developer, I would probably look at, okay, where's the most capital? And I think the most capital will be, will be deployed on Avalanche because it's the first step where you can get money instantly, basically, and deploy some yield farm on Avalanche, and then people will get rewarded um, by using it. Where on the other hand, on Phantom, like, there already has to be some capital, so you get the TVL needed to get the Phantom liquidity incentives. So this could work out because like there already is some capital on Phantom, but what you need is this critical mass liquidity. And after that, everything is like smooth, smooth sailing. Um, but I think Avalanche is like, my, my, my bigger bet is on, on Avalanche, at least in the, in the short, medium term. And in the long term, it will be interesting if there will be more development activity on Avalanche or in Phantom. And uh, this phantom could win this. Now that you have a better understanding of the liquidity incentive part of the conversation, let's look at some of these this objective data. Again, big picture in mind, we have Ethereum with around a $407 billion mark cap. Absolutely insane. If Avalanche or Phantom can just carve out even, let's say, a fourth of that, I mean, both of these projects are going to explode. Avalanche is going to do close to a 10x from here. If, if it could cover a fourth of Ethereum's current mark cap at $400 billion, and then Phantom can go even crazier at a current valuation of 3.5, right, right around there, um, mark cap. So pretty crazy when you're looking just at mark cap growth potential, but when you go and look at the actual uh, uses, so when you're looking at people using these decentralized applications in both the Phantom ecosystem and the Avalanche ecosystem, I like to use DeFi Llama for total value locked in, and then the top projects in here to look at the dominance. So we have Curve dominating the Phantom ecosystem at 26.07%. Um, that's number one. Then we have Spooky Swap and Beefy Finance. Uh, both of these, uh, well, really for, for Phantom, it comes down to $1.24 billion locked in compared to Avalanche's, uh, if it'll pop up here, $2.64 billion. 
um, where Ben Key is really, really taking that top spot um, in, in dominance. It, in, in, for me, you always want to look at the majority decentralization, right? So Ben Key does have a lot of that market dominance in the Avalanche ecosystem. So if something happens there, uh, we could see some uh, changes in what's going on in Avalanche. So uh, the point is, pay attention to this. Make sure you're tracking this if you're invested in anything in the Avalanche ecosystem, because these trends are very, very important to watch, in my personal opinion. Uh, beyond that, we have crypto fees. I do like to watch this for uh, you know the growth of these networks. If we're looking at just Ethereum's overall fees, we have around 20, $29 billion, 29.6, close to $30 billion in one day fees. That is crazy, in my personal opinion. Um, and that's just the averages, obviously. So don't be super argumentative with this. This is, again, just trying to look at the objective data. And I want you guys to form your own opinion. So really, the question is, what do you think is better, Avalanche or Phantom? Hopefully, you have a little bit better perspective once we cover these fees. Now, with Avalanche, $134,000. That is tiny for fees on the daily basis. Seven-day average is $178,000. But when you're comparing thousands with billions, we got a big gap to fill. So uh, I, I would like to see user adoption increase in this space. And really how you bring that, in my personal opinion, is education information and free education information, which is a great aspect of YouTube. So uh, beyond this, and that's also why you should subscribe to Roland's channel over at Microwhale. Um, let's see. So Phantom here, uh, $40,000. That is so small compared to what is going on here in Ethereum. So again, there's massive, massive uh, growth potential, in my personal opinion, if, if they can just carve out a little niche in the smart contracts or race. Uh, but yeah, so I'm curious what you guys think about this. I'm curious what you guys thought about Roland's opinion of kind of the liquidity incentives, comparing those. And then also when you look at some of this kind of macro data on both blockchain networks, uh, what do you think? I, again, I don't think it's black and white. Personally, I have exposure to both uh, blockchain platforms and altcoins in that given blockchain. So for example, with, uh, with Avalanche, I have a lot in uh, Avalanche and then I have a little bit in Pangolin, a little bit in some of these others like Joe, I recently learned about. Uh, but yeah, that's all for this video. Again, I can't emphasize enough. I highly recommend you go over to Micro Whale Roland's channel. He has a, a more in-depth kind of two-part uh, series on Avalanche versus FTM and uh, his thoughts on SushiSwap and a lot of other things. I'll definitely be working with him more moving forward. Yeah, so go show him some love. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, button all. There's a Telegram group link down below in the description. Also, leave us a comment. What do you think is better and why Avalanche versus FTM? Uh, if there's any altcoins in either of these blockchain plat uh, networks that you enjoy, uh, definitely let us know that as well. But that's also what the Telegram group is for because randomly on YouTube, uh, the, the algorithm gets rid of comments, which is kind of annoying. So on Telegram, nothing's banned unless you're spamming or advertising in the Telegram chat. So beyond that, we also have Twitter, Twitter and Instagram at investglobal underscore IO. Big things coming here in Athens, Greece. Uh, Roland's actually in Tbilisi, Georgia. I was there at the beginning of the summer. Hope everyone's doing well, invest global, and until next time.